Welcome to the Delight Your Marriage podcast. You're joining me, Bevla Rose, as I dive deep into the beauty, power, and truths about intimacy. Learn not only the practicals, but the heart behind what making love is all about. Delight your marriage. Hey there, it's Bella. I hope things are going well for you. And uh, today's episode is one that I just want to invite you to consider who we are as Jesus followers and how he treated women differently than he treated men. So it's going to be a good conversation. I'm not sure if you've heard um, some of these thoughts before, but I've worked with men who are, you know what, (laughs) let me pause that because we've got a lot to get into. So um, before I do, I just want to invite you. We would love to help you. If you need help on your marriage, um, just as being a man, like understanding who you are as a man, maybe you didn't have good role models. Okay, let's do this now. Let's learn how to be the man that takes takes leadership, takes ownership, and leads his family well. I would love to invite you to a clarity call to find out uh, if you'd be the right fit for us to help you. And, um, and then if you're a wife and you're like, I don't know how to invite my husband to leadership. Um, you know, he, it seems like he does not care about all of the things that you're talking about, Bella. And if that's the case, there may be some, some actions that you are either doing that are repelling him away from caring or some things that you haven't been doing yet that will actually help him and invite him to care more and to really love you in the ways that you are really uh, craving. So let's go ahead and dive in. I've worked with men who are um, really broken about their sexual sin. And um, they've been addicted to some level of it for many, many years. And, um, and they feel like they're too far gone. They know it's affected the way that they look at women. They know it's the, uh, affected the way that they interact with their wife. And they know, they know, but they don't know how to get to the other side. And I, I just want to say, I, I hear you. Um, I also hear the shame. Also, I also can understand that you're in this prison of your mind that it's really bleak to, to know if it's even possible to get out of. Um, so I, I, I'm not going to go into that deeply, um, aside from just giving you a vision of, of freedom. There are men in our program who have extremely sordid pasts, just extremely, extremely. And I, I want to just give you a vision that, um, God can free you. God can free you. I think this insight is going to be really helpful for you because Jesus didn't consider men and women the same. He didn't. He didn't treat them the same. He considered them as unique, equal and unique. Okay, so I want to just give you a few of these examples uh, from scripture of when Jesus was not harsh with the women, but in fact protected them. So the woman caught in adultery, John 8, 1 through 11. When they kept on questioning him, he straightened up and said to them, let any one of you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. And then a little bit later it says, then neither do I. Oh, this is when they've already left. Um, and then he basically asks her, where are your accusers? And then she, she says, they've gone. And he says, then neither do I condemn you. Jesus declared, go and leave your life of sin. So it's not that he's, he's easy on sin. It's just that he's, he's forgiven her. And then he says, okay, so get up and, and let's not do that again. Leave your life of sin. Um, he's gentle with her. The Samaritan woman in John 4, 7 through 30 Jesus answered her, if you knew the gift of God um, and who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Um, and when he's, when he's speaking to her, he also is very gentle in, in how he uncovers her sin, um, but in such a way that she goes off evangelizing him, uh, evangelizing for him um, and brings the Samaritans. Then... Um, 
And then if you remember the the woman that was bleeding for, for many years, um, and she touched the hem of his, um, his, uh, his garment, and he said, um, power has come out of me, who touched me? And she, um, and she admitted it was her. And, and he said, daughter, your faith has healed you go in peace and be freed from your suffering. And then the woman with the alabaster jar. Um, and this is the woman who, um, who, uh, was, was a prostitute. And, um, and they, uh, this is Luke 7, um, 36 through 50. And this is them. They were accusing him of how, how could you, how dare you, um, have this sinful woman. And, uh, and and Jesus says, I tell you, her many sins have been forgiven as her great love has shown, but whoever has been forgiven little loves little. And so he, he defends her in front of their, their judgment. And he ultimately says that wherever the gospel is preached, her story is going to be spoken of. And so that's, he honors her. And then, um, he even talks about a, um, the, the widow's offering in, in Mark 12. And he says, truly, I tell you, this poor widow has put more into the treasury than all the others. So he's honoring this poor woman. And then if I, if I'm thinking about all the times Jesus is harsh with people, is he ever harsh with women? Is there ever a time that he's harsh with women? And I was thinking, well, um, certainly not the Pharisees, because those are all um, men. And what about the money lenders? Was that, um, you know, when he had a, a big thing of rope and, um, and um, sorry, it was a, a whip um, that he drove all the money lenders out of the temple? Well, likely it would not have been women because they weren't financially literate. They didn't have the the ability to lend money and, and even have, um, access to, to finances that, that they could have been the money lender. So likely that would have been men as well. And, um, I guess the final, uh, example I want to give you is around how Jesus was very kind to the widow, um, in Luke seven. So, I just think about, um, so it, it's, it says soon afterward, Jesus went with his disciples to the vi- village of Nain and the large crowd followed him. A funeral procession was coming out as he approached the village gate. The young man who had died was a widow, widow's only son and a large crowd from the village was with her. When the Lord saw her, his heart overflowed with compassion. I just think that's so important. Men, Jesus was the manliest of men's. And his men's, Jesus was the manliest of men and his heart was moved with compassion by a woman's tears, a widow. I mean, they were low on the totem pole of valuable people in their society. He was moved with compassion to the widow's tears. And for that reason, he said, don't cry. Then he walked over to the coffin and touched it, and the bearers stopped. Young man, he said, I tell you, get up. Then the dead boy sat up and began to talk, and Jesus gave him back to his mother. That, I think, is so fascinating because um, it wasn't as a result of that young boy having a great call on his life. That's why Jesus decided to raise him up. No, Jesus was moved with compassion um, because of the woman's tears, her sadness. And here's the interesting thing. It goes on to say, great fear swept the crowd and they praised God saying, a mighty prophet has risen among us and God has visited his people today. And news about Jesus spread throughout Judea and the surrounding countryside. I just, I just want us to sit on that for a second. Jesus did not have to heal that little boy or that, that young man. He didn't have to. He did it because he was drawn by compassion for the widow's tears. And that's why he healed that boy. That's why. And then all these people came to know who Jesus was. Are you ignoring the tears of a woman? 
Are you ignoring the pain of a woman? Are you ignoring the pain of your wife? Are you ignoring the tears of your wife? Do you think she's trying to manipulate you through her tears? I've heard people say that and it it really makes me scratch my head. Like I don't, I mean, I guess there are people out there that do that, but I just don't know them. I haven't run into them. No, when a woman cries, it's because she has some deep feelings. And for you to ignore them or assume that she's manipulating you, my goodness, Jesus didn't do that. He didn't assume this woman was trying to manipulate with him with her pain. No. Gentlemen, if you are missing the pain of a woman in front of you, you should be moved by compassion. Jesus was moved by compassion for women. He didn't see them as the same. He treated them very differently. Even Peter, he was willing to rebuke. He never did that to women. He was gentle and tender. He even, while he's on the cross, he made sure that his mother was well taken care of. Why did he do that? He had enough going on, (laughs) hanging on the cross, but no, he made sure that his mother was taken care of. And he first appeared to women, women who, who had no, um, no standing in court. No one believed women in, in, in a court setting. No. And yet Jesus appeared first to them. They were the first ones to see Jesus resurrected. So I just, I just want you to, to, to search your own heart of, are you gentle? Are you gentle with women? Even historically, it's always been protect the women and children. The men are out protecting, but when they come to their home, they're gentle. It doesn't make you less of a man. It makes you more of a man to, to be strong out there in the world and come home and be gentle and be relaxed and not be mad and harsh with your wife, but be kind. Jesus treated them very differently. And I, I, this is something that's very strange to me and, and, you know, if you're, if you're a woman, you might get a little triggered by this. So I know I kind of am because I've been, I, I guess it's a little bit of a trigger warning around pornography, but I've, I've been, I've been learning more about it and my heart just breaks more and more. Um, like every time I learn more about the brokenness and, um, and how rampant it is. There's a book that I was recommended, actually. Shout out to our wonderful facilitator who recommended it to me. You know who you are. Um, but, uh, the book is called Unwanted, and um, it's called it's by Jay Stringer, um, J A Y, and uh, and it's a good book for anyone struggling. I, I think it's worthwhile for sure. It's it's um it's yeah it's causing me to have some some triggering. It's it's really just painful to see how to just remember how widespread it is um, pornography and sexual sin, but. Um, there's an opportunity to be curious about what, what's going on there. Not to just, like, I want to give you the why, but I think there's a journey of getting free. And we as the church need to equip our men and we need to equip our churches with tools to get free. So, so Unwanted is a good book for that, but um, we have some really stellar amazing men in our work together that that really hold each other accountable and encourage each other and help each other through this journey. Um, but I want to just, I want to just invite you to think about like right now, um, our, our, our world's very confused, right? Society is very confused in terms of um, misunderstanding the roles of men and women and wrecking and mi- and not recognizing that women and men are different and that they need different things in marriage to feel fulfilled. I mean, it's, it's wild how different they are. Um, but, um, but the thing is we're in society right now where men and women are treated essentially the same in, you know, out in the world, you know, things are becoming more even in terms of how many leaders are women and in different realms. And that's a good thing. I I want women to obviously have all the freedoms that the men do. And I'm so glad that we vote. And I'm so glad that I can do this work because I'm a woman. And my goodness, it's, it's wonderful. But we've really swung to the wrong side of, of where are the books that teach men how to be men? It's almost, um, uh, like I, I raise little boys 
And it's hard to almost find books where the uh, characters, the main characters are strong boys, because we've swung in this direction of all the, the stories and the things are about strong women. And it's like, okay, great. I'm glad we're, we're strong womening everything, but where's the strong boys? Where are the strong men that are learning to be men? Um, that's, you know, where are the role models of that? And there's a lot of reasons um, that's not the case. But nowadays, in the public realm, women and men are treated equally. But in the, sadly, the the private of pornography, the women are treated horribly. And I just want to kind of invite us to realize Jesus was safe. That's why women were okay with being around him. In fact, they wanted to be around him. In, in a society where women were treated, they were treated really badly. Even the woman who was a prostitute. I mean, imagine that dear child was, was abused and used and raped and all of these horrific things have happened to her. And yet she goes towards a man to be healed Oh my gosh, all these women are treated so well by Jesus. And why? Because he was actually safe. Dear men, if you are observing a woman getting abused, mistreated on the internet, you are not safe. That has to be the inner world of you cleaned up. So you are safe. And this is a process and a journey that I invite you to get on because safety is required for your wife to be at ease with you. So I'm grateful that you're listening because that means you want that. You wouldn't have clicked here if you didn't want that. Jesus saw women rightly as children of God, not as a means to his pleasure or something, something, something. It wasn't. He saw them as children of God. And that's why we women, um, we're so tender and we're so, we need to be treated with gentleness. I was treated so mean. I was treated meanly by men of God, um, in my history. It's so weird. Because I just assumed they would be kind like Jesus, and they just weren't so many times. And I don't understand that. I didn't understand why. And I don't think they meant to ignore my feelings and, and not, not care. Um, but I think it was just a lack of, of role models. They just didn't know how to care. They didn't know how to listen well. They didn't know how to recognize when somebody's being vulnerable, vulnerable and what to do about it. Not, um, they wouldn't get, it was, didn't make them anxious to not know how to respond to somebody's pain. It's a journey. It's a journey to learn. It's a journey to become safe for your wife, but it is a journey that is well worth it. It is a journey that is well worth it. So yes, the the negative, the pornography or, or anything else sexually that's sinful needs to be turned off. Um, you need to have the journey to freedom. And maybe you have felt like you're completely at a loss. You don't know what to do. I invite you, there's enough reason for you to get out of it. And, and, and I don't mean to add more shame to your plate, because that often is the self-perpetuating cycle of you feel shame, then you go towards it and you feel shame, you go towards it. And it's, I, look, I've been there. Just to be clear, I was addicted to it for some years uh, growing up, years. And I just would repent and go back to it and repent and go back to it. And it was just this awful thing. So I know to some degree, at least, what you're going through. And, um, but there is freedom. There is freedom and it is a journey of, of growth in that. And you do need people involved. You can't do this by yourself. Isolation does not help in this realm. And so I, I do want to invite you uh, this book, Unwanted, Jay Stringer. So that's one, one step 
in that direction of freedom there. Also getting people involved, that's a step. Um, And then learning how to be safe for your spouse. So you don't feel anxious when she's sharing her pain. You know what to do when, when she shared something, but then she feels embarrassed that she shared it because you couldn't handle it. Well, why couldn't you handle it? Because you didn't know what to do. Okay, what do you do in those moments when you notice that she was vulnerable? Well, I'll just quickly share. You compliment her vulnerability. You tell her, thank you so much for sharing that. That really means a lot that you opened up to me. I know that was hard. Thank you for sharing. That's, that's painful. That's hard stuff. And you really care about her heart. Because Jesus really cared about the heart of women. He really did. You know, men and women are made in the image of God. You don't get the full picture of God when it's only men. You don't get the full picture of God only women. We are both made in the image of God. And so when you see the nature of a woman, you see the nature of a man, they both reflect God, but do not pretend they're the same. Jesus did not pretend they were the same. He was celibate as a choice. He said in Matthew 19, haven't you read the scriptures? They record that from the beginning, God made them male and female. And for this reason, a man leaves his father and mother and is joined to his wife and the two become one flesh. Since they are no longer two, but one, let no one separate. What God has joined together, let no one separate. So I just invite you to think about, um, God created them male and female. Created them male and female. Sexual, your sexuality as a man is given from God. It is a gift. Um, and so what happens next is interesting. Um, Moses permitted divorce only as a concession to your hard hearts, but it was not that way, the way God had originally intended. And I tell you this, whoever divorces his wife and marries someone commits adultery unless his wife has been unfaithful. Jesus disciples then said to him, if this is the case, it's better not to marry. And I think that's interesting. He doesn't, the, the disciples don't say, if this is the case, it's better not to have sex. No, he's, they say it's better not to marry. And Jesus says, not everyone can accept this statement. And Jesus said, only those whom God helps. Some are born as eunuchs, which eunuchs means you can't have sex because The equipment's been cut off. (laughs) So some are born as eunuchs. So they're born without the the equipment um, that are male without male equipment. Some have been made eunuchs by others. And some choose not to marry or sorry, sorry. Some choose to live like eunuchs for the sake of the kingdom of heaven. Let anyone accept this who can. And so Jesus is basically saying, Um, if you're, if you're not going to get married, then you're going to live like a eunuch. Like those are his options. You either are safe and take care of that one woman, thus living like a eunuch every other place, just that one woman, or you're going to live like a eunuch for the sake of the kingdom of God. And he says, if you can accept it, you should. And that's echoed with Paul. That's echoed with Paul. Paul also says many times that he would prefer everyone be single. (laughs) But if you can't because your passion is too strong, all right, fine, get married. But he's basically saying, get on with the kingdom of God. Get on with the stuff you're supposed to be doing. Um, But be clear. Let's be clear. Let's be clear. The reason your wife is built the way that she is, that she just doesn't jump into sex for no, you know, for no reason. The reason she's built that way, most women are built that way, is not all of them, but most of them, is because um, she is meant to have a safe space where you are gentle and peaceful. And even in First Timothy, it talks about, I think it's First Timothy 3, it talks about the, um, the husband being 
uh, gentle and being, and being the, the husband of just one wife for him to be a leader. He's got to have the family in order. And so for that to be the case, he needs to be a man of self-control, kindness, goodness, and, um, and really treat his wife the way that she was designed to be treated. So I just invite you, dear husband, it, it, it really has to be um, an endeavor for you to get your eyes off of anything that's outside of what God would want you to be th- seeing, um, and viewing and thinking about, um, it's a continual, it's a journey, but you can get there. I have seen men get there. I have seen it and stay there. But if I could just, if I could just tell you it's worth the endeavor, it's worth going deep enough as to why you run in this direction and, and to get into your own psyche, what, what is the reason that you go in this direction? Where, where does it come from? Where, where is the originating piece? Because you really do want to be like Jesus. You want to be a safe man for your wife and for everyone else in your work, in your ministry, everywhere. You want to be safe. You want to fight to protect women, not enjoy their objectification and suffering. You want to be the one that's protecting them. That's what Jesus would want from you. So if you are even every now and then observing something that is, is uh, horrific towards women, that, that is not God's best. And so it is a journey not to, I'm not here to shame you or judge you, but I am saying, gentlemen, you have an opportunity to stand up and be more. You have an opportunity there are things you can do. Let's get started. Let's start by downloading this book, Unwanted, by Jay Stringer. Let's let's start by getting on a clarity call with our advisor so, so you can get free, so you can learn how to be a man, the man that your father never taught you to be because you just didn't have a good role model. He didn't know. He didn't have good role models. We would love to serve you so that you can be the man that your wife needs that your daughters need, that your sons need to learn from. Lord, I just ask right now for this man listening. Lord, that he would love his wife practically. Not just the best he knows how, that he would dig deeper. It's not that he's broken. It's that it's a learnable skill. It's just a journey of growth It's just a one step in front of the other. It's not that he has to dig deep enough and this has to be this natural thing because if he's a man, no, he is a man. There's no question there. Okay, how does he use that strength? How does he use his manhood to stand up in that? How does he grow into the human that you have designed him to be? He doesn't have to look within himself. He looks at what you have taught us in the word, what you modeled for us, Jesus. There's so much good. So I pray that you would give him grace to know his next step, that he would view women as precious and as the weaker vessel, as it says in your word, that he would be gentle with her. He wouldn't be harsh. He would be gentle. And he would recognize when she is hurting and needs his strength and needs his kindness and tenderness. And he would have wisdom to know how. And if he doesn't know, he would decide it's time to learn. It's time to learn. In Jesus' name, amen. I just have men that are coming through my head that I just, oh, some I have worked with your wives, some I know your wives well, just, oh, if I could only help them to learn these things. If they would just submit themselves to a quarter of a year to grow, and then you've got the tools, then you've got the wisdom, then you understand, Hmm. then you're free. And you could be what 
you know your wife needs that you just don't know how to. It's not that you're, it just means growth. It just means learning. So if you're in that category, I'd love for you to go to delightyourmarriage.com slash CC. I'd love to work with you. I'd love to help you to the other side. My goodness. Oh, there's so much joy in the men that um, we get to witness cross the other side. It's, 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 it's just God's kindness. Um, but it's Jesus way. It's just putting his way in practical, practical (laughs) step-by-step checklists and bar charts and whatever, just really practical. So anyway, thank you for listening. God bless you. And I, I hope that, um, there's a, yeah, you'll, you'll read Jesus a little differently, um, as you, as you seek to be like him. All right, take care. Thank you so much for listening. If this has blessed you, I encourage you to take a moment and send it to a friend. Also, if you haven't yet rated this podcast five stars, I would love for you to do that. It will actually allow more people to find this material. God bless you. and We'll talk soon.